Hello there, it's Professor Cried here today with a textbook, I mean video on weapon art calculations for Elden Ring. If someone asks you how weapon art is calculated, all you have to do is link this lecture. I am here to impart the knowledge of this very cryptic aspect of the game to you, as simply as possible, which, I hate to break it to you, is not simple at all. In this video, I will explain how each type of weapon art math works, and how you can use the spreadsheets for each type of weapon art. Don't hesitate to watch this video over and over again, or even take notes, as maximizing your weapon art is very crucial to optimizing builds. I do not suggest skipping at all, because missing a minor detail might mean being lost like a needle in a haystack. Let's take a look at the chapters of the textbook, I mean, video. Man, this joke will never get old, but really, this video is pretty much a lecture, even more so than my other ones. We have weapon hits, enhanced hits, bullet arts, and wind arts, with the first three being absolutely crucial. Wind arts is more of a bonus secret bullet art of sorts, so if you understand bullet arts, wind arts will be easy to understand. And actually, there is another subtype which I call fake enhanced hits. So the table of contents looks more like this. Fake enhanced hits is pretty simple, once you have weapon hits and enhanced hits down. Chapter 1 Weapon Hits The simplest weapon arts of them all. They abide by the rules of a regular weapon attack, hence the name Weapon Hits. It is simply a question of AR times MV, where the AR is the attack rating of the weapon using the weapon art, and the MV is the motion value, otherwise known as damage percent of the weapon art. Simple, right? Let's take a look at a quick example. Lion's Claw is a weapon hit type weapon art. For the weapon art MV spreadsheet, Weapon hits will only have the values on the left side of the sheet under columns like Physical, Magic, Lightning, MV. While all the MV values are listed, not all of them will always be used. For example, if we're using a Lightning Infused Swihander at this given level of stats, it has a total of 798 AR. 401 of the AR is Physical, and 397 of the AR is Lightning. If we multiply both by 2.4, we get 962 for physical and 953 for lightning. On the other hand, if it was a keen Zweihander, multiplying the physical damage by 2.4 will yield 1750. Pretty simple, right? One extra thing to note when you're reading the poise damage in the document is that the 600 MV here indicates that you do 6 times the base poise damage of the weapon for PvE, and 10 times that amount would be the PvP poise damage. Continuing with the Zweihander example, all Colossal Swords have 6 base poise damage. For their R1, they do 240 MV of poise damage, which is 14.4 poise damage in PvE, and 144 for PvP. These numbers are already in the MV sheet in a tab of their own. As for the weapon arts, we take 6x6, which is 36 poise damage in PvE, and 360 for PvP. Easy enough too. Now that we're done with the easiest of the weapon arts, let's move on to enhanced hits. Hopefully your confidence won't take a plunge down the cliff after this section, because there's still bullet arts. Chapter 2 Enhanced Hits What exactly is an enhanced hit? An enhanced hit is a weapon attack with a temporary buff. By temporary, I mean only for the duration of the attack itself. You will see your weapon glow when you do enhanced hit moves. For example, Loretta Slash and the follow-up for Glintstone Pebble or Glintblade Phalanx are all enhanced hits. Even though the follow-up for Flaming Strike has a fire buff, it is not an enhanced hit. It is a fake enhanced hit, which I will go over later. Okay, so enhanced hit calculation is split up into the weapon damage portion and the temporary buff portion. The weapon damage portion is simple. It is what we previously covered in Chapter 1, Weapon Hit Calculations. As for the temporary buff portion, this is where things start to get tricky. Let's look at the formula for the temporary buff. The temporary buff is equivalent to base buff times 1 plus 3 times percent weapon upgrade times 1 plus stat bonuses. Whoa, 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 slow down, professor. What the heck is this? It's alright. We'll go over the terms one by one. First, I am going to abbreviate percent weapon upgrade as PWU, as this is a simple term that will come up in the future too. Let's talk about what PWU is. PWU is basically how much your weapon is upgraded to full expressed in a percentage term. 
Elden Ring has regular weapons and somber weapons that have different max upgrade levels. This is basically a variable that will allow us to express them in percentage terms on equal grounds. It basically means the higher the upgrade level of your weapon, the more damage you are going to deal with the buff portion of the enhanced hit. This is here because the buff portion's calculation does not depend on the base AR of the weapon. For example, when fully upgraded, 25 out of 25 is the same as 10 out of 10, which is 1. As you can see on screen here, this is simple math. 12 divided by 25 is 0 0.48. 8 divided by 10 is 0 0.8. Give it a try to make sure you understand. What is 20 divided by 25 and 0 divided by 10? Answers in 3, 2, 1, 0 0.8 and 0. So a fully upgraded weapon will result in a 1. If we plug 1 into the PWU term, 1 plus 3 times PWU will become 4. That is to say, regardless of which weapon you're using, when maxed out, this term will always be 4. For those of you who are trying to calculate for lower level invasion characters, keep in mind that this value changes. For example, at 20 out of 25 or 8 out of 10, this term will result in a 3.4 instead of a 4. Easy enough. Next, base buff is simple too. Simple in the sense that you just have to look it up on the MV sheet on my Discord. Let's take a look at Glintstone Pebble as an example. As you see here, the projectile of Glintstone Pebble is a bullet art, so the weapon hit portion is empty. They are all zero. On the other hand, the follow-up of Glintstone Pebble has motion values for the weapon hit portion of the enhanced hit. If you scroll to the right, as you can see from the roll number on Google Sheets, you will find even more values. These are the bullet art values and also the values for enhanced hits. You will see both hits of Glintstone Pebble are filled for the attack magic column. We'll ignore the projectile first as that is the next chapter. You can see here that the follow-up attack of Glintstone Pebble has both the weapon hit MV and the bullet art damage. This is an indication that the weapon art is an enhanced hit. Not that you know how to read the spreadsheet. Base buff is simply 45 magic attack. Okay, two terms down. Not that bad so far. Finally, stat bonuses, which is uh, actually two more terms. I really didn't mean to trick you. Stat bonus is weapon scaling multiplier times stat multiplier. Weapon scaling multiplier is weapon dependent, which is to say different weapons can produce different damage based on the way they're scaled. I randomly picked a weapon class and chose two weapons within the weapon class. I'm going to be doing this example with the Banished Knight Halberd and the Knight Rider Glaive. Weapon scaling multiplier is actually the number behind this letter grade. So if you're staring at in-game numbers or the wiki, you'll never figure this one out. On the weapon AR calculator I use, you can tick the scaling checkbox and it'll show you this number. Knight Rider Glaive's weapon scaling multiplier is 1.175, while Banished Knight's is 1.081. Even if they're both B magic rating, the Knight Riders will give a slightly bigger boost to the buff power of Glintstone Pebbles follow-up. By the way, this number can change according to your weapon upgrade level too. They will be lower if not fully upgraded, so do keep that in mind. As for the stat multiplier, you will need to check another sheet which gives you the stat multiplier curve. Find your weapon and find the curve you should be looking at. Start with the tabs on the bottom. Choose these tabs according to the type of weapon arts you're using. For example, Glintstone Pebble is a magic weapon art, so we click the magic scaling tab. Next, find your weapon. Find the right roll based on the affinity of the weapon. Since I chose the magic infusion for the two halberds, we will be looking at line 4 on the graph. If you chose something else like lightning infusion for your halberd, but still chose Glintstone Pebble as your weapon art, you will be looking at line 0. At the very top of each tab will be a table with different lines. You can see from the legend. The blue line is craft 0, and the red line is craft 4. Since we're using magic weapons at 50 intelligence, we scroll over graph 4 and find 50 on the x-axis for 50 intelligence. The stat bonus is 0 0.8 and not 80. If we had chosen lightning infusion with the same stat spread, you will be using 0 0.66 for the stat multiplier instead. Alright, so let's math it out. These are the two weapons respective stat bonus. Now to link the whole thing up. 45 base magic damage. Fully upgraded means that the weapon upgrade percent term is 4. I just did the math for the stat bonus, so rewind and watch it if you need the explanation again. 
Add that to 1 and here is the formula. Do the math and 349 and 336 are the buff values we're getting for the respective weapons. Add the weapon hits parts to the buff and this is the total damage you'll be dealing before any other reductions such as PvP nerf or the enemy's defense and negations. Okay, practice makes perfect. I will be providing you with all the necessary information, but it is time to try it on your own to check if you actually understood what I'm talking about. Let's use the same weapons and the same move to keep things as simple as possible. Except, we're going to be doing the values for 80 intelligence instead of 50 intelligence. Figure out the buff bonus for the glintstone pebble for each weapon, and then the total damage. 2 points per question per weapon, so 8 points if you get everything right here. Remember your score and continue on to the next section. Pause the video here to do some of your own work. Alright, let's see if you got things right. Base buff is 45. Weapons are still fully upgraded. Split them up according to the weapons. Do the math. This is the answer for question 1, the buff power of the weapons. Next, to find the total damage, we just add the weapon hit section. This is the final answer. Okay, before we move on to bullet art hell, let's quickly take a breather with the much simpler fake enhanced hits. Two examples here are Flaming Strike and Lightning Slash. While you do swing a buffed weapon around, the buff is not temporary enough as it doesn't only last for the duration of the attack. These are fake enhanced hits. You will find nothing on the MV sheet when you scroll to the right of these fake enhanced hits using Flaming Strike as an example. Unlike the Glintstone Pebbles follow-up, you will not find any MVs for the Fire Attack Bullet Art section of the follow-up Flaming Strike attack. Yet, there is still a buff on the follow-up attack. As I've mentioned, Glintstone Pebble has a temporary magic buff and is dependent on the weapon you're using. On the other hand, Flaming Strike and other fake enhanced hits have a constant buff value regardless of the weapon you're using. In Flaming Strike's case, your weapon gains a 90 flat fire damage for 40 seconds. This flat fire damage buff doesn't use the MV of the weapon art, by the way. It uses a flat 100 MV for the follow-up attack which means a raw 90 fire damage bonus that doesn't scale. Much simpler than enhanced hits. Chapter 3. Welcome to Bullet Art Hell. This is what makes weapon art calculation about as comprehensible to most of you as hieroglyphics. Thankfully, you're watching or at least listening to the Rosetta Stone right now. Alright, enough with the metaphors. Let's get right down to making you regret trying to find out more on weapon art calculations. While the name of the weapon art implies shooting out bullets, not all projectile shot out are bullet arts, and bullet arts can also be non-projectile attacks, like lightning ram. To know whether or not a weapon art is a bullet art, you should just check the MV sheet's left and right side values, as I've shown in the previous section. If only the right side contains values, it is a bullet art. That is because bullet arts have absolutely nothing to do with your weapon's base AR. Let's take a look at the formula for bullet arts. Damage equals base damage times 1 plus 3 times PWU plus 1 plus stat bonuses. Hmm, looks familiar, doesn't it? Base damage is just the bullet art damage on the sheet once again. We covered PWU as well, and the 1 plus 3 times PWU term will still be 4 when your weapon is maxed out. But why the stat bonuses in pink? Ah, that is because once again, it is a mixture of terms. This time, of 3 terms. Stat bonuses is equivalent to base scaling times affinity scaling multiplier times stat multiplier. Let's begin with the base scaling term. This term splits into three types. For unique weapon arts, this term is the same as the weapon scaling for the right stat at no upgrades. This is important. No upgrades. Let's use Moon Veil as an example. Moon Veil does magic damage, so we use intelligence. Once again, we're going to need the scaling number behind the lesser grade. Remember, I said no upgrades, right? So not the plus 10 moon veil, because the damage you'll get would be off by a ton. Translating it to numbers, the right number to use for calculating a fully upgraded moon veil's bullet art would be 0.6. As for infusible weapon arts like our glintstone pebbles projectile, they are fixed at 0.25 for single stat scaling weapon arts, or 0.5 each for double statted scaling weapon arts. 
how do you know which affinity scales to what? For bullet arts, these are the only relevant stats the weapon art will scale to. For example, if you're running Flame of Red Mains, a fire weapon art, not a flame weapon art, the only relevant stat is strength. Even if you invest 99 points into faith, it will not increase the damage of this weapon art. This is a single stat scaling weapon art, which means the base scaling for Flame of Red Mains is 0.25. On the other hand, Horfrost Stomp is a cold weapon art, meaning it will scale to two stats, Intelligence and Dexterity, at 0.15 base scaling for each stat. It does effectively mean you need to calculate both the Intelligence and Dexterity portion, and then add them together to get your final stat bonuses. So yes, twice the work. Next comes the Affinity Scaling Multiplier. Here is the chart for all of them. You can sort of think of it like a simple periodic table of elements, or whatever you want to imagine this is. You either open this video or a sheet to search for the right number every time, or you can be insane enough to memorize it like me, so you can do bullet art calculations in your sleep. This is the weapon affinity of your weapon. Unique weapons have the standard infusion. As for why they are strong and weak, heavy, or keen, don't ask me. How do you tell them apart? They're from digging through the files. Strong Heavy will have 100 for its reinforced type ID, while Strong King will have 200 for its reinforced type ID, which means that this dagger that scales better to dexterity actually has a weaker dexterity based bullet art, like Beast Roar or Thunderbolt, versus a King Iron Greatsword that scales better to strength. On the other hand, your Flaming Strike or Flame of Red Mains, which are strength based weapon arts, will do better on the dagger rather than the Iron Greatsword. Doesn't make sense you say? Well, I don't make the rules. Here is a copied list of weak heavy weapons and weak keen weapons. If you don't find them here, they are strong heavy or strong keen. One thing to keep in mind is there exists weak or strong versions only for heavy and keen, and not for fire or lightning infused weapons. Back to the chart, you will realize that most weapon arts will get a bonus by using a weapon affinity that prefers the same stat. However, this does not apply for blood and poison. In fact, a blood weapon art will do the least amount of damage on blood or poison infused weapons. You can literally swap it to any other affinity in order to get an increased bullet art damage. You might think this doesn't make sense, but the blood and poison affinity is mostly for giving you the status effect on the weapon while allowing your build up to scale to arcane. Therefore, it already gives you a significant advantage as status buildup from your weapon art that is scalable will also scale to your arcane investment. From a balancing perspective, it actually makes sense that blood and poison infusion lowers the damage of your bullet art projectiles. Sadly, the affinity scaling multiplier is yet another reason that quality infusion is kind of crap at meta PvP levels, as it does not yield good returns by focusing on one stat. The same issue also applies to code affinity for bullet arts. With the limited number of stat points to invest, you can actually do better with a singular stat affinity, such as either keen or magic instead of cold infusion for cold weapon arts. But cold affinity is still better off than quality, as it has a relatively higher intelligence affinity scaling for bullet arts, and the frost status buildup on the weapon. Continuing with our glintstone pebble on magic halberd example, let's find the affinity scaling multiplier. If you're trying to maximize glintstone pebble's bullet art damage, which scales to intelligence, you would look down the int column and find the highest number. Magic Infusion does indeed give us the best multiplier of 2.35. Finally, the stat multiplier is the same one from the enhanced hit section. Go back and review it if you forgot about this graph and how to read it. Since we're going to be using a magic halberd, which line should we be looking at? Answer in 3, 2, 1, line 4. Stat multiplier for our magic halberd at 50 intelligence is 0.8. Anyway, aside from blood and poison infusion producing low damage for blood and poison affinity arts, the stat bonuses can produce some pretty odd results that make maximizing bullet arts kind of unintuitive, such as fire affinity bullet arts will actually have a better damage bonus from a heavy infusion at higher investment levels. The same thing can happen on keen infusion for lightning affinity arts. Okay. Let's link everything together in an example. Since there isn't weak or strong magic, we don't have to care about what weapon it is. Any infusible weapon at 50 intelligence will do the exact same amount of damage for the projectile of glintstone pebble, 
so this is all we need. Well, provided you can refer to the graphs or have them memorized by heart. Read the base damage of the bullet arts from the right side of the graph, which is 137 for Glenstone Pebbles projectile. Our halberd from enhanced hit was fully upgraded. So PWU equals 1, and the term is therefore 4. Next, stat bonuses. Because Glenstone Pebble is a non-unique weapon art that only scales to intelligence, the base scaling is 0 0.25. The affinity scaling multiplier, read from the chart, is 2.35. Stat multiplier at 50 intelligence is 0 0.8. Multiply the terms together and we get 0 0.47. Multiply all the numbers together and we get 806 magic damage before any PvP nerfs and reduction from defense or negation. Before wrapping things up for bullet arts, there's one more thing I want to mention. The attack super armor column located to the right of bullet art damage sounds like hyper armor when you're attacking, but it is actually a poise damage overwrite. For example, 40 attack super armor for Flame of Red Mains means that the move deals 40 poise damage in PvE and 400 poise damage in PvP, regardless of the weapon you're using. Once again, practice makes perfect. Let's use a fully upgraded Moon Veil at 80 intelligence, as it is a unique weapon, and I figured many people would be curious about its damage. Find the bullet art damage of Moon Veil's R2 weapon art. If you get everything right, that's 8 points. Partial credit of 4 points if you only get one of the terms incorrect. Everything you need is on the screen. Pause the video here if you want to take out your calculator and try it yourself. Okay, let's start with the base damage, which is a simple reading comprehension question rather than a mathematical one. R2 bullet art damage has 155 base damage. I'm asking for the weapon art damage on a fully upgraded moon veil. So PWU is 1, and the whole term is 4. Same old, same old. Now, for the base scaling, this is probably where people might get careless. The answer for base scaling is 0 0.6, because for unique weapons, we have to use the unupgraded version of the weapon. We're looking for the unupgraded intelligence scaling on Moon Veil, which is 0 0.6. Next is another point some of you might get wrong. Moon Veil has the standard weapon affinity since it is a unique weapon, and you don't actually infuse it with magic. The affinity scaling multiplier is therefore 1.8. Finally, I gave you the stat multiplier for free. You just needed to remember it's expressed in a decimal, so it's 0.95. Do the math and the stat bonuses comes out to 1.026. Multiply them all together and we get 1256 magic damage before any reductions. This should be your answer. Congratulations if you got this right. That's it for the tests, even though we still have win art to cover. You can comment down below your total score out of 16, and what you got wrong if you don't have a perfect score. It can help me understand which parts make people confused. Finally, sit back and relax to enjoy some extra bonus knowledge on win art, which so far only applies to the win portion of Storm Assault and Storm Caller. Recall the bullet's art formula. Now if you see down below, the wind art section doesn't have a bullet art damage, but actually follows the bullet art formula in another way to result in a bullet art-like calculation. Instead of base damage of bullet art times the term that accounts for a weapon upgrade level, we replace it with base AR of the weapon times the regular attack motion value, which is the number on the left side. By base AR, I'm talking about the base AR of the weapons, which can depend on their infusion as well. For example, a fully upgraded Heavy Knight Rider's Glaive will have 282 base AR. The rest of the calculation is the same as Bullet Arts. Great job to everyone who hung on until the end without falling asleep. Like and subscribe. If you want to support my channel, please buy my fantasy novel, which will also allow you to request a topic of your choice or expedite any existing topics. Remember to post your test score on the bottom if you did try the questions out and anything that made you stumble. Regardless of your score, great job for people who attempted to solve the questions on your own. If your friend ever bothers you again on how weapon arts are calculated in Elden Ring, you know which video to send. See you next time.